Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette. We're in Acts chapter 16, and Paul has just done something uh, that's going to get him in a little trouble. A woman who had been uh, possessed with a spirit who could tell the future, made a lot of money for her owners, apparently a little slave girl. Uh, Paul turns around and commands the spirit to come out of her, and immediately that happened. We're going to pick this up in verse 19 today. Acts chapter 16, verse 19. When her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Paul has been through this before. Okay, this is not news to him. Verse 20. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. When they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Here we go. Paul's used to this. He's used to making people upset. And why? Because he tells the truth, and the truth bothers people. And he, you know, they've accused him of creating an uproar in this entire area. And so this is what happens when you preach the gospel. Some people just don't like it, and they apparently do not like it. Verse 25, but at midnight. I want you to see midnight as something. I want you to see midnight as something. Midnight as the darkest part of night, in the middle of your night. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. They didn't do it so the prisoners would listen to them. They were just singing and praising God. And I have an eyelash in my eye. But they were singing and praising God. So forgive me if I touch my, my eye a little bit this morning. The prisoners were listening to them. In your darkest hour, what are you doing? When things get toughest, what do you do? Even if you feel like you're unjustly being punished, and I'm sure Paul and Silas probably felt like they were somewhat being unjustly punished, what do you do? In your blackest of midnight, what is your response? Is it to shake your fist at God and blame Him for not responding to you more quickly? Is it to blame him and tell him that he's nothing like you thought, he's failed you once again? Or do you praise, do you worship and pray? I am not going to finish this story today. Because I want to leave you with this very, very important thought this morning. That when things get tough and when you are in your deepest, darkest midnight, when you don't see the dawn, when you don't know what's coming. And I have to say this uh, in a figurative way. I believe that it's the prayer and the worship that starts turning your midnight. It's, it's that moment. Who knows how dark it could have gotten, but I believe that whenever you begin to pray and worship, that's when midnight comes. And that's when the sun starts coming your way. My friend, you cannot allow the enemy to rob you of your prayer, to rob you of your worship of God. You have to, in those times, honor God all the more. Worship him all the more and give him the praise and the glory and the honor that he's deserving. Are you in your midnight? 
as soon as we're done here, just start worshiping God. Just start thanking Him for His goodness. And your dawn will soon be on its way. Father, I pray that those hearing today, Lord, that they would respond to you and would make this a time, a season of prayer and worship. And that, Father, that you would break through their darkness and let them see that you've come to save them, deliver them, and rescue them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.